Hello. In this video, we'll have a look on how we can request or install SharePoint Framework Solutions from the store. And the reason why this is actually two different things is that with SharePoint Framework Solutions, as those solutions are running in the tenant level, a normal end user cannot actually add them or install them directly without the administrative uh, uh, steps to a site collection or to a site in SharePoint. And that means that we have changed this uh, model slightly if we convert this one to the classic SharePoint adding model, which is maybe uh, slightly, well, it was certainly a different than SharePoint framework. It had, it had its own, uh, uh, let's say, characteristics. And you could actually install a SharePoint add-in only on a specific site. But since SharePoint framework solutions are actually, like I said, running in the tenant level, these have to be installed from the store by an administrator. And that's why we have two different paths depending on who's actually uh, accessing the SharePoint store or where we're accessing the SharePoint store. So that has an impact as well. Now, all of the things that I'm showing in this video are a status, what are these capabilities in August 2020? And uh, we can refer uh, in many of the UXs being slightly maybe old, outdated uh, related on uh, because they're more uh, relevant for SharePoint add-ons and we're working on modernizing this experience absolutely during 2020 or in the upcoming, uh, well, upcoming quarters, absolutely. Again, we'll definitely have the, the experience more polished uh, one step at a time. But let's actually start by the requesting capability, which is more, again, for end users. So as an end user, you're seeing something uh, or you hear about something cool to be available uh, within the SharePoint store, and you want that to be available uh, within your site collection. So let's actually jump uh, there. So let's go to a normal site collection. And this is our site collections in sites slash coms. Uh, so this is our communication site collection, nothing special from there, from that perspective. As a site collection uh, owner or a site collection administrator, I can then start modifying the content. I can add uh, additional capabilities and I can also request an app or I can add an app, uh, which will then expose the SharePoint store. So let's actually do that. So I'm gonna add an app. And from here, we can actually see that this is relatively classic experience. Again, the, all of this is going to be modernized in the future, um, but I can actually go to the SharePoint store and then start seeing different solutions and capabilities which are being uh, created and have been shipped to the store by our uh, partners. So from here, we can uh, see the most relevant, highest rating, lowest price, new and, and new name and newest. And we can say the ratings, we can say some features, apps and all of that. Right now, currently within the store, you cannot filter if the solution is built using SharePoint framework or if it's a classic SharePoint add-in. So there is no filtering based on that. And most of these are actually SharePoint add-ons. Now, if we want to install, and when we're using SharePoint framework solutions, uh, one of the things before we go to the installation, one of the things to be also aware that the price is outside of the store. So we as a Microsoft, we do not actually take a cut out of the, the licensing or we don't provide a licensing capabilities for SharePoint framework solutions. So as a partner, they might have implemented their own licensing, which will mean that you can get the solution from store, it will work for a while, and then it requests a license, and then you can contact, contact a partner to get the license, or it might work in other ways as well. Now, in my case, I'm gonna concentrate, as said, for the SharePoint Framework Solutions. So let's go to the newest section, and we can actually see the quite a lot of actually SharePoint Framework Solutions. So the, the Lightning Tools one, the Renko one, the IGOS one, uh, Lightning Tools again, Navigator for SharePoint list, and, and Office at Work is here as well. So there's multiple solution providers which already have provided SharePoint Framework Solutions. So let's use uh, the Renko one just as an example uh, of the solution. Doesn't really matter which one do we use because the flow is is exactly the same. So let's click that one. And in the same way as with SharePoint add-ins, we can actually see the details around the functionality and then the partner has provided some details related on capabilities, what the solution is doing, and, and some of the pictures what the solution is exposing as well. Now, one of the, the most, let's say, most visible things or things which we need to notice and we will be noticing is obviously that we have requested. We do not have added. And this is actually true, even though I'm using a tenant administrator account right now, it's just about how the implementation has been done for now. All of this will be modernized absolutely in the future. But requested 
is shown because I accessed this store using a normal site collection URL. So I came to the store from a normal site collection. I didn't go to the store using the app catalog. So when we are actually in the context of the app catalog, you can install SharePoint Framework Solutions as long as you are a site collection administrator of the app catalog. Because site collection administrators of the app catalogs are this app uh, administrators in your tenant. So in my case, like I said, I am, because I'm accessing this from a normal site collection, I'm going to request it. Uh, we will see again a slightly classic uh, UX. Uh, I will request for the whole organization because that functionality, the, the limiting based on seats and users doesn't really have a ref, uh, impact or a difference within the SharePoint Framework Solutions. But again, it's the same UX for add-ins and SharePoint Framework Solutions for now. And you can request basically your tenant administrator or your tenant app catalog administrator to acquire the solution to be available within the organization. So let's add here something like we would like to use the Rencor, the Rencor web part in our sites. Can we please? Thanks. So. When we are setting this uh, request, uh, obviously depending again the company rules and governance and, and processes, you might need to have a larger uh, request. Uh, the request itself will say who has requested uh, the solution um, and when it has been requested and what is actually the solution which has been requested. So let's actually do that. And because I'm a tenant administrator within this tenant um, or app catalog administrator as well, I will actually get an email. Um, so that is actually the email which is sent by SharePoint Online to the app catalog administrator to let them know that somebody is requesting uh, that there's an, uh, this app to be installed. Now let's actually let's actually process that. So let's now move to the experience where I'm the tenant administrator again. This one is an app has been requested by an end user. The end users can actually see that the app has been requested and they can see uh, the, the uh, status of that request as well. Now, as a tenant administrator, you will get an email or you can go to the app catalog. Uh, if you get an email, I can click the app here and that will open up the request related on that particular uh, email. Or Alternatively, we can absolutely go to the App Catalog home site, and if we refresh, oops, if we refresh uh, the site, let's actually do that. We can see that the app requests has now an entry where the person is requesting uh, the MOD administrator. In this case, is requesting Rencore Code App Analyzer to be installed within that uh, tenant. And again, really important thing to understand: the difference of this experience is because SharePoint add-ins could have been installed only in a single site collection by a normal site collection owners, but SharePoint framework solutions are always installed through the app catalog. So that's being controlled by the app catalog administrators, typically their tenant administrators as well. Again, depending on the tenant size and tenant processes and governance processes what you had, but anyway. So clicking this one, I will actually see now the request what the person was requesting. So MOD administrator requesting Rencore Code App Analyzer, the justification on that one, and we can actually track the request and is it approved or not, and who's approving uh, through this, uh, that, uh, these options. We can actually see the app details in here, click here to view app details and purchase or manage licenses. Again, the managing of licenses is not really relevant uh, when we're talking about SharePoint framework solutions, but for now that is the message over there. And since we are accessing this under the app catalog, uh, app catalog uh, of the tenant, we can actually see that the button is added. So again, we can see that we are accessing the store under the app catalog URL. And uh, so we can actually add it at that one in. And so that also means that only the tenant app catalog administrators can install SharePoint Framework Solutions to the tenant because they are tenant level capabilities. And then they're lighting up across the tenant uh, potentially, depending on the solution uh, functionalities. Now, if when I click the edit, so I'm adding that to the tenant, we'll actually start the acquisition process or downloading process uh, of that particular solution from the Office Store or from the SharePoint Store, and then we're installing that particular solution uh, in the uh, in the tenant as well. So this UX, as an example, is is pretty familiar if you are an app 
a, let's say, a classic LOB SharePoint Framework App Catalog developer, or, yeah, or you have installed any SharePoint Framework solutions to your uh, tenant, because this is exactly the same information when you track and drop the SPPKT file inside of the, of the App Catalog. So basically, making sure that people understand that it's full trust client side code is running in the context of the user. Uh, it is coming from these domains and it would have also the permission requests if there would be any API requests listed in here. I will actually approve that we can uh, make it available across all of, all of the sites in the organization and clicking deploy. And that will basically then enable the solution to be available uh, within this tenant. And when we load again the, the app catalog, we can say that we have installed the SPFX Rencore code client side solution uh, to this tenant and it has been activ uh, activated. It has been tenant deployed slightly depending on the tenant settings. And that means that in the end user side, that functionality is now lighting up. Now, few things to notice uh, if you go back in uh, on the root of the site, if you go to the app requests, we can still see that the app request uh, status is new. So this is by design. So we're basically looking into the end user to then say that, okay, so I have actually uh, uh, approved this and I, we have installed that. And when you do approve, this information is then being visible for the end users. And there was also a free text where you can actually add additional details that, okay, so we accept this uh, and these are the reasons why we accept that or whatever is your, again, uh, process related on the solutions. Now, if you go back on the, uh, on the, da, 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 in here, uh, no, if we go back on the site where we were requesting that in here and we'll refresh the request, we can actually say that uh, the Rengor app has been uh, analyzed and uh, the code app, app analysis in this case has been approved and it has been deployed. So that also means that if we, if I go back to my site, let's go home and let's add a new page, not the app. Let me actually do that one more time. Let's add a new page. We will create an empty page. And in here, then as that with that solution, SharePoint Framework solution has been now deployed in the tenant, we can actually find uh, the, the web part which has been provided by that particular partner. So in the Rencore's case, it is a Rencore code analyzer web part, which is slightly specific web part, so to say, not an end user specific functionality, but again, really cool functionality for people to take advantage. I think there are multiple other solutions which would be more end user driven. Key point here, however, being on the fact that the solution, the web part is available from the partner. You have installed that to your tenant app catalog based on the process which we provided. And one more time, just to recap, we are absolutely working on, on modernizing a lot of the capabilities which we are seeing in the UX. Uh, right now, the SharePoint frameworks are in the SharePoint framework solution are supported in store. The experience will be modernized. There will be filtering. There will be easier way to understand in the flow um, uh, one step at a time during 2020 uh, autumn. But thank you for watching this one. Hopefully that clarifies how the acquisition of the SharePoint Framework solutions uh, do work from the store.